Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, he has just been offered a full time job position, a system engineer, isn't it? Engineer and RF engineer. Yeah. A trade here. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next group of presenters, please. Victor Ramos, Victor Ramos, and Rebecca, and Ivan. Everyone else, please mute your mic. Doctor, as a presenter, you can mute everybody. I did. I did mute. I mute all. More people have joined in since. The yeah, I mute all. I've mute all. Yes, they have unmuted themselves. Go ahead. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Hans, can you mute yourself, Hans? Hi. Hi, Hans. Yeah. Hans, mute, you mute yourself, please, Hans. It's showing okay. everyone is muted here on my screen. Okay, so let's go. Ahead and begin. Okay. Um, all right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, how are you today? Uh, we are Ivanda, and this is our journey making the next smart electric motorcycle. Speak louder. Oh, can you not hear me? No. no. Okay, my apologies. Can you hear me better? No. You still need to speak louder. Uh, okay, one second, can get, please. Can you get the other headset, Kyrie? I can't. There's too much noise indoors, so I have to start going outside. Okay, oh, okay. Um, one second. Okay, it's better now. Can you all hear me? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're here. <sighs> Are you language? Um, I don't know why I cannot hear myself. Okay, so oh, okay. Victor, can you second. take over for a while? Okay, I can, I can. Um, yeah, because we can't hear you. Okay, uh, but he, Kyrie has a part in the presentation, Dr. O. Just trying to, um, well, anyways, um, are you okay with me, Kyrie, going on? Yes, um, okay. he will come back in after. All right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we are... Okay. Okay. Let's see. Uh, is this any better, everyone? Yeah. Yes. Okay. All yes, right. it's better. Okay. So, sorry about the, the technical difficulty. I'll go ahead and begin. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are the Ivanda team, and this is our journey of making the next smart electric motorcycle. And then, Victor, the next slide. You have to go back one. So, um, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce ourselves. Uh, I am Kari Beckett. I'm a co-founder. Victor Ramos is our founder, and Ivan Torres is also a co-founder of our company. We would like to thank our advisors and consultants, Dr. Ososanya, Dr. Hargani, and also Mr. Pablo Sanchez. Uh, we would lastly like to thank uh, all the staff at SEAS for helping us and for also helping funding the project. On to the next slide, please. Um, so the key issue that we're approaching to tackle is that uh, pollution in the world is at an all-time high. And for the only way we see fit to really tackle this and to apply our skills is to approach a plug-in electric vehicle. So in the United States, petroleum use has been dominated by the transportation market for many years. And we have had some changes with the introduction of plug-in vehicles and hybrid vehicles that are way more fuel efficient and do reduce the daily consumed amount of petroleum. Um, we see the big issue in here is also in conventional motorcycles. It is very, it's, it's a common misconception that 
with motorcycles be using less gasoline that they are more fuel efficient and better for the environment. However, that is wrong. Um, in some cases, motorcycle conventional motorcycles can produce up to 16 times more of uh, voltaic organic compounds. If we move on to the next slide, Victor. If you see in the top left diagram, if you look at the light blue bar, that represents motorcycles of many different generations. You see that in the top left, the blue, light blue bar is lower in carbon dioxide. However, in carbon monoxide, nitric, nitrogen oxides, and hydrocarbons, motorcycles produce extremely more in terms of um, voltaic organic compounds. On to the next slide, Victor. So, <clears throat> like I said, to combat this, our, our goal is to create our electric uh, motorcycle. However, doing so in this format of making a company helps in many different ways. For example, um, Tesla in its own at today's date has generated about 50,000 jobs for uh, many different types of engineers. But we also don't think about the supply chain. The supply chain, the supply chain for lithium, for metals, for cobalt, for many different chemicals has dramatically increased over the past years by creating a new market. Is somebody echoing? Can everybody hear? Is everyone mute, please? Okay, so as I was saying with the supply chain, the supply chain has dramatically increased from the uh, competition. Uh, companies such as Chevy, uh, BMW, Mercedes, Honda, Toyota have all increased their production of electric and hybrid vehicles, thus driving the supply chain through the roof. And we'd like to show you our approach in the next slide. No, it's fine. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Victor Ramos. I'm here today to present to you guys our current project. We work on a 1978 CB550. Yes, everybody is taking these classic motorcycles and making a cafe racer. We are not deception. We're going to make it electric. Anyways, my partners, Kyrie Becker and Ivan Torres, we all decided to make this motorcycle using a golden motor has our power plant and also using an M unit to be our controller for the light system and all this stuff. Anyways, we're going to talk about this a little bit more on this series. <laughs> So, uh, constraints. Um, because of a project con containing expensive components like battery, motor, and controller that affected the overall cost of the project. Um, power consumption. Uh, moving, moving 170 pounds with a one inch shaft fuel locators in, uh, in 920 millimeter meter. That's the torque that we, we're going to get from, from the motor. And uh, the number is the, is coming from our on our motor chart. Uh, so interpolated from the table, we have forty uh, point uh, twenty five amps. Then solve the equation: twenty amps hours divided by forty twenty five amps. Twenty twenty amps hour is our is the current that we 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 get from the battery. And then, uh, if we solve this the, this equation, we we got twenty minutes of ride with our actual motorcycle. So we see that, uh, that we're consuming a lot of power and uh, 
that that's one limitation that we have also another constraint will be time we only had two semesters to investigate assemble test um pre present our project and now you know like the, the current situation of the public health that we have so that also is another constraint that we had in our project um you can move forward victor so that's the chart that the of our of um all the rpms on the torque that we we can get from our motor and um yeah you, you can move forward victor so th this is our, our code to to get the miles per hour of a motorcycle and uh, this is a MATLAB code that we we used and we see the front sprocket it has 20 i'm sorry 12 uh, sprockets and the rear sprocket we have 37 and we use here just to for calculation purposes for 4000 uh, uh, rpm so then uh, we use some uh, some formulas and then uh, we we got a uh, a theoretical uh, number of 84.90 miles per hour of a motorcycle and our next ne next slide we'll see we'll see our like uh, our real number is there any question of, of the mod so far Come on. So we have some now we we can calculate uh, our miles per hour and our miles per charge. So we have a wheel ratio of three point eight three. I'm sorry, three point zero eight. That comes from the twelve uh, twelve on thirty seven as as bracket from the from the motor output and then the the wheel. Uh, and that will will. Then we used uh, we uh, we used the RPM of uh, 30, 35.7 I'm sorry 3507 RPM um, and that will give us uh, a real value of uh, 1137 RPM of our of our rear wheel. That's the RPM of our rear wheel, and that's that's the RPM that we need to 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 calculate the rest of the of the things and uh, we we continue calculating and then we we got a num we we multiply i'm sorry we we need a, the the distance of um that we're gonna we need we in we need the distance uh the the uh, our motorcycle will will ride in for charge so now we move, we we use the formula to to calculate the the circumference and uh, pi times uh, diameter divided by twelve that will give us five point seventy five feet and then we use that number and multiply um, the RPMs and now that will give us uh, six six thousand five hundred and fifty one feet per minute uh now we can use that number and multiply it by 60 and we'll get feet per hour and um, <clears throat> then we just convert that number feet per hours and divide it by 5280 and we'll get 74.45 miles per hour that is our th theoretical theoretical number uh of our motorcycle speed then if we if we want to know uh, my, the mileage we we just get the um the velocity that we got before 74.45 miles per hour uh multiplied by the hours and the hours will be 0 0.07437 hours 
and uh, that will give us 5.53 miles per charge. You can take over, Victor. All right, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. So this is the schematic, the basic schematic of um, um, of the motorcycle. On the left side, we're gonna have the M unit. The M unit is our control system for like all the electro uh, electrical devices that we have in the motorcycle. So I'm gonna start off with the voltage here. So on the voltage, we got the voltage here. We got the motor controller, electric motor, DC converter, relay, and key switch. We're gonna start here on the right hand side with the battery. We have a 48 volt battery at 20 amp hours. From the 48 volt battery, we're gonna go down and we're gonna go. Um, we're gonna go to a DC to DC uh, converter, and it's gonna step it down from 48 volts to 12 volts. And then we decided to put a 40 amp fuse, um, so we wouldn't fry the M unit, uh, just in case there is a overcharge or something, right? Or we have a, you know, something can go wrong, so we have we have to make sure that we have the fuse there. Then we go into the M unit. From the M unit. We're gonna go to an ignition switch or a key switch, um, but this is a two-step switch. It's not like your car or like how the old cars were that there were um, three steps that you have like the ignition and then you had to, the third point, which was the starter. This one is only like on and off, so it's two points. And then we're gonna go to ignition. The ignition is gonna turn on the M unit. The M unit, we're gonna turn on. Um, the relay, the relay is going to allow the 48 volts to go through the motor controller, and then the motor controller is going to be able to send the power to the electric motor. The electric motor has uh, two different hole sensors, or encoders, that's going to be talking to the motor controller to see the speed, RPM, and everything, so it can fluctuate the 120 degrees um, phase, uh, which, because it's a BLDC, brushless, motor DC. Anyway, so this is the basic schematic, and on the top, hence on the top right, uh, top left, I'm sorry, we're gonna have like the handlebar controller switch, and on the switch, we're gonna have like the handle, um, the brake bar, we're gonna have the low and high beat, we're gonna have the horn, and we're gonna have the left and right turn signals. That's on the, on your head controller, right, of the motorcycle. Uh, so this is the base, the basic schematic on the run. As we see here, the blue is represented 12 volt systems, the, 40, the red is represented the 48 volts, and the green is sending is basically signals out. Go to the next slide. Um, so one of the things here is that this M unit was not made for electric purposes. So we are modifying it a little bit. As you guys see, this will be the schematic of a typical M unit where we have like some things has like coils and we have spark plugs. We got the stators, voltage regulator. We don't have none of this stuff here, nor this, because we don't need it. It's an electric motorcycle. It's less maintenance, right? It's less things to complicate it. So we went from there to that, which is an amazing um, step. We only keep the, the high and low beam, turn signals, uh, the displays of the RPM for the speedometer, and we can also like calculate the RPMs of the wheel in the back or the front. Um, and uh, basically, this is the basic stuff. And then we have like the control unit, which is which I talked about it before, the turn signals, buttons, and the horn. I mean, etc. So this is how it will look in a typical application of this uh, this device here. Uh, for the motor controller, this is how the motor controller is wired. We have the, the BLDC here, the motor, and then it connects to the three phases here to the microcontroller. We have the whole sensors or encoders that are sending the signal back to the to the to the control uh, the controller unit. And then we're going to have uh, power coming in from the battery pack here. And then another thing that another feature that we have on this motorcycle is that this motorcycle has 
regenerator power. So basically, if we ride in down on a hill, right? Typically, you would just like tap the brake a little bit. On this motorcycle, you let the gas go, and the motorcycle will activate automatically regeneration system that will start putting the power back into the battery. If you let the throttle go off, or if you press the brake, um, it will start charging the battery. So if you drive an electric car, you know when you let the when you let the gas go, you feel like that pushback is because the motor now they were they went from being a uh, motor to technically being alternators where they putting all this power back or generators where they putting all this power back from the wheels into the battery. Uh, that's one feature that we have. And then we have uh, in our application this throttle body is a little bit different because we have a hand uh, hand and but um, in throttle, uh, so that just sends the signal to the to the uh, to the controller, and we using a the this uh, um, hand throttle is gonna be from zero to five volts. In typical applications, they using um, one to ten kilo ohms uh, potentiometers. Uh, we are using a whole effect sensor here instead of a potentiometer. Um, some people says it's more reliable. In our application, we can either use a encoder, uh, uh, we can use a potentiometer or a whole sensor. It's either or. Um, we can just like just program it, as you guys can see here. We can program it using the USB, and we have the software to be editing the parameters on the motor. Uh, another feature that this uh, motorcycle has is that we can use cruise control. So if we're driving in a highway and we want to go 50 miles an hour, we can just tap the cruise control and the motorcycle will take the output of the motor and it will maintain the RPM. Let's say that the RPM is uh, uh, 4,700, which is like which is like about 74 miles per hour, right? And because of Texas, um, that would be a nice uh, highway speed limit. The motorcycle will maintain that speed uh, is steady. And if, if you go downhill, because the motorcycle, the motorcycle is gonna try to start going faster. It's gonna, it's gonna prevent using re, uh, regenerating braking. It's gonna start keeping those RPMs at that speed. Um, anyways, another thing that I want to talk about it right now. We have the motorcycle set up for test mode. In test mode, we are preventing the motorcycle from going above 20 miles an hour, and also now allowing the motorcycle to give full torque. Right now, we are a one third of the total torque that the motorcycle can give. This motorcycle can go up to 20 um, kilowatts. Right now, we only running a 10 kilowatt uh, on, the, on, the, on the consumption of the motor because we want to prevent it. That, that, that gives us the 10, 10 horsepower rather than 23 horsepower. And if you... Um, you might think, oh yeah, 23 horsepower is, is not a lot. Once you have a 120, 150 pounds motorcycle with 23 horsepower and a and 160 to 200 pound uh, rider, this more when you have instant torque like this motorcycle gives, this motorcycle can literally make a wheelie and throw you off from the from the bike. So we have pushed it down to like half of the total power, so we can prevent accident. During testing, um, so this is the current setup that we have. Um, so for budget, budgeting of this motorcycle, uh, a typical motorcycle, electric motorcycle, would run you around twenty to twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollars, which is the zero motorcycle cost uh, cost around that that much. In our case, our motorcycle potentially with uh, with uh, with the uh, the parts and everything minus the labor is it can cost uh, three thousand six hundred and thirty-nine. If you add another two thousand dollars to this uh, number here, we can actually we can actually take um, a bigger battery, a beefer battery, and and change the configuration of the motor. And instead of being forty-eight volts, we can make it ninety-six volts, and we can put like a hundred and twenty to two hundred amp hour battery into this motorcycle. So we can run approximately, uh, we can run higher speed, and we can we can uh, have more more miles per charge. We can go up to like 300 miles per charge just by adding a different battery. But like I said, it has to be 
a little bit more expensive, like a $2,000 more. And then if you put another $2,000 for the labor, this motorcycle comes around $8,000. So why do we do this? We decided to do this because, like I said before, a regular motorcycle that's electric costs you around $20,000, but this motorcycle, like through the whole work, including labor, is only going to cost you $8,000. You know, it's almost half of the price. So we we decided to, uh, this is why we decided to do this conversion. And also, and mainly, not, not just because of the numbers, but because of the environmental effects, we wanted a uh, peer, uh, appeal to more people because it's more affordable um, than all the electric motorcycles. We want to appeal to a greater population out there so we can help with the environment, right? Uh, I'm going to let Kyrie explain uh, the slides. Yes, thank you, Victor. So piggyback also on that last note that Victor had mentioned. One second, my camera is off. My camera's on. Is it on or off? <laughs> oh, there you go. Uh, Yvonne, can you mute your microphone? Thank you, buddy. Uh, to piggyback off that last note, um, the price being so low is, is extremely um, extremely appealing to the masses. The big issue that we have is that, of course, based off of the donor chassis that we use, uh, Victor, if you could mention how much money would you say you spent on the donor chassis beforehand? Your mic is muted. Are oh, you good? On the donor chassis, um, I bought it for five hundred dollars, and it, it was uh, it, because it's a nineteen seventy eight motorcycle, and it wasn't running. It was just like neglected for a long time. It was a barn find. Right. So I got it actually, and I brought that chassis from Rhode Island, mm -hmm. Providence, Rhode Island. So right. yeah, five hundred dollars uh, is what I paid. So the, our purpose is here is that we're making conversions. Because it's cheaper to start converting motorcycles than making uh, a chassis from, from from zero. Because we have to go on the review from the uh, from the National Highway Administration, et cetera, et cetera. So it's easier to convert. Because if you convert a motorcycle, you are you are legally uh, uh, you are legally meeting all the standards that they have for a motorcycle. Exactly. Yeah. And in doing this, we're also promoting high, better ways to recycle and reduce you know human waste our global footprint of course is, is massive at the time but um our this is a great method of reducing our global footprint and also recycling and being economic um so there are a couple things that we weren't able to fully develop throughout the course of this semester the largest reason reason of course is through uh, because of corona um, to be specific, for example, I have some sensors that are still being shipped to this day that I ordered in March. I have no, no, the post office says that they, they've been lost in shipping and that they will show up eventually, but I, I have no date. Uh, also, uh, we're going to order, of course, more batteries. Our funding was cut short due to, um, uh, Victor, the, uh, I, think, I think the screen went away. Uh, our funding was cut short due to, you know, our, some me personally, I I can't work. My my personal job outside of school is done. Uh, so that's all the money that's going to go to ours. Our new battery pack is out of the window. Um, and uh, let's see what else do we have. Uh, we also have um, uh, our dashboard. Uh, the sensors that I ordered were specifically for a Raspberry Pi that we're going to use. That was going to have a custom dashboard that we're going to make using Qt. Uh, Qt is a software that allows users to create GUI, or I'm, I'm sorry, graphical user interfaces that essentially you can customize in any form. If you guys have ever been inside a Mercedes, a Ford, a Honda, or if you've been on an airplane, like for example, the Lufthansa airline company, or if you've used a, any AMG product, all of those devices and companies have been using QT for years. Um, as you see that example down below the dashboard there, uh, was made, I want to say about two years ago. And um, I, there's actually an animation that goes with it that shows how it works. But I, we weren't able to bring that in, of course, for time. Um, and then can you go back? Thank you. Uh, so our other future developments is that we are going to, instead of making a donor chassis, we were thinking about making a our own custom chassis that would, of course, have to be economical and would have to meet the requirements of the uh, highway safety standards. Um, and then also with that, create a better 
powertrain, meaning that we would have to design our own motor from scratch. And with the batteries that we'd get in our future funding, create our own battery pack that can compete with what's on the market. And of course, to do that in the future, we have to fundraise and of course, avoid pandemics. Um, on to the next slide, Victor. <clears throat> when it loads. There we go, well, this works too. So I, was, I can work off this. So this here is a Raspberry Pi that's uh, paired with a eight inch uh, LCD screen. This screen was gonna be used as our dash for the bike that we're going to mount. But of course, due to parts not showing up in the mail, we didn't really have a chance to mount everything. Um, there's, there's much more that we have planned, but hopefully by the time things clear up, we'll be able to continue the project. Um, actually, we are going to continue this project outside of school when we uh, acquire more funding. Um, can all the uh, participants mute their microphone? Now, presenter, unmute yourself because uh, unmute all. Go ahead, Kyrie. Thank you, Dr. O. Okay, and then, um, so, so yeah, uh, on to the next slide, Victor. Would you like to? All right, I'm, I'm gonna take over this. Um, I wish I can put it full screen, but I don't know what's happening here. Um, so another feature I wanna touch base is that we said before, we also make it in a smart electric motorcycle. It's not just like, oh yeah, we're doing a conversion. We're not stopping there. So another thing that we're doing is that we creating sensors here. On the left is to display where I'm pointing out, is to display the temperature of the battery as well as like the engine, uh, I'm sorry, the electric motor uh, temperature. And it's really important to keep uh, these factors in line because we want to make this, uh, this system run healthy. We don't want it to overheat or anything. And if we have any issue, we would like to like be able to display it. So this is to display it for us. But then in the future, we want to have all this display into the into the display that Kyrie was uh, programming for. Um, the program that I was running here was a uh, uh, Max thirty one hundred sensor and with the max 3100 my idea or our idea was that we want to detect the temperature uh, the oxygen level and the bpm of the of the rider and why is this important it's important for us because we want to know uh we want to know how much a motorcycle how how like how healthy is the rider on the motorcycle because in motorcycles the on the motorcycling community, there is a thing that for every three hours of riding, you have to stop and rest for another hour. Why? Because once you're riding in a motorcycle, it's not like you're driving in a car. If you get thirsty, you just reach out for a water bottle and you start drinking it. But in a motorcycle, there is a lot of heat because you have leathers, you have helmets. There's a lot of conditions that can affect your riding. Can you guys mute yourself, please? Um, so you have, all, so you have all these, these, uh, factors that can affect the rider. So we want to monitor all the health of the rider and we want to take this and let's say that the, the BPM is spiking because the motorcyclist is having, is having a pre heart attack or something. We can read this using wireless system into our, um, into our main, um, server and it starts monitoring real life these riders and tell them like tell them hey you have to pull over your your vitals are going you know, crazy right now please pull over or if the motorcyclist because we have a gyroscope built in we can also we have two three gyroscopes one on the microcontroller the second one is going to be on the m unit and the third one is going to be on the raspberry pi that's going to tell us how much if there is a g-force for example that is our normal so let's say that whenever you speed up from zero to 60 miles an hour you're going to experience like at least 0.6 g-forces right on your body but if you experience six g-forces we know that you probably has gotten into a car accident or something 
and therefore the motorcycle is going to turn off and then we're going to be able to check the, the GPS location and everything and send um, emergency. So that's one of the smart features that we will love to incorporate in the future to this motorcycle. Um, There's uh, one more thing. Go ahead. Along with the features that Victor just listed previously, uh, the big reason why we chose to also uh, start developing with QT is because QT would allow us to begin developing a companion app as well as a GUI for the Raspberry Pi. Um, the beauty of QT is that we'd be able to take the data, the user data, the, um, the heart rate, the BPM, the temperature, and also the specification, I'm sorry, not specification, but the uh, telemetry of the motor and the drive unit to then be able to show everything onto a user's phone and be able to, if things go wrong, we're able to like have like our own OnStar system, for example. Um, and yeah, and we actually just gained access to QT uh, less than a week ago. So we're excited for this summer, gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, Victor, your microphone is muted, my friend. Thank you. Another feature that we have on this motorcycle is that we can use our cell phones to turn on the motorcycle. So let's say that you lost your key, you can just come in with your cell phone and literally just like open the app, turn it on, and then you can start riding. Um, that came with the with the M unit that we got. Um, yeah. So we have a demonstration, a video that demonstrates um, everything that I was talking about. Uh, it's 10 minutes long, but before I play the video, do you guys have any questions? There's one in the um, there's one in the ch in the chat that I'd like to uh, um, address. Uh, Go for it. Uh, Dr. Carroll uh, says, "What are your plans for the bike? Many European countries are banning new gas vehicles as soon as 2025. Are there other electric bikes, and how do they compare?" Uh, yes, there are many electric bike companies actually. Um, Globally, there we have zero. Uh, Honda, no, not Honda. I'm sorry. BMW is developing their own, and alongside of those two, there are a bunch of small companies, just like us. Many more bigger than us, of course, since we're just students. Um, but there's the 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 mass amount of companies that are emerging. It's, it's hard to keep track of. So uh, there definitely are. But our plans, of course, is to finish development. Of course, which is probably going to take maybe a, a year to really create a good package that we will feel happy with as long as um, you know we continue our work. And also, once we finally develop our full chassis, we should be able to practically fund ourselves and create whatever bike we see for the future. Yep. Um. Um, so to address the second question to that, the benefit over our bike than uh, our competitors is that uh, the key thing that we, we mentioned is the the economic threshold, the, the price threshold that it takes for a user to enter this market. The, the average zero bike, their lowest, their lowest tier bike, I believe, starts at about $15,000. And as you see, with this donor bike that we acquired for $500, with everything we spent, we have a working model that we can actually take around DC with a license plate. And we only spend uh, 4,300, 4,600 about approximately throughout our entire senior project. Yeah. And uh, I, w I would just like to add that right now, like Ivan was talking, our range for a charge is only like four minutes because we only have a 20 amp hour. But like I said before, if we push that to like uh, to a bigger body, like 100, 200 amp hours, because we go on higher in voltage rather than driving and current will be driving a voltage that will allow us to have like less wire so we can have a lighter weight and will allow us to go for a longer miles. Right now we are a 48 volt and the, we, the way that we run in this is that for lower the RPM, the higher the current that we draw in. And then, so for example, if we're running a 47, uh, 4,700 RPMs, we only uh, we only consuming about 265 amps rather than oh, I'm sorry 165 amps rather than riding at low speed like for example if we go in uh, if we go in anything 
anything like a thousand five hundred, we draw in almost eight hundred amps. So one of the things is that if we drive in in a higher voltage motor, what we can do is we can drive on voltage rather than current. So if we go in like it will be in the city, we will get we will get more miles per charge than we get on the highway, but typically an uh, average rider drives more time in a city than rides on the highway. And this motorcycle that we built is mostly oriented for highway driving because on the highway, it will give you like 10 minutes of riding, but in the city can only give you like two to two to three minutes. Um, and that's because of uh, we have, uh, uh, we drive in a current. Yeah, yeah. We, we, need, we need more torque to, to start the motorcycle, and in the city, you you know you just tapping every like every corner, you 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 drawing more current from the battery. Yeah. You guys have any other questions? Another one in the chat, uh, also from Dr. Carolyn. Uh, we did consider creating a um, a bicycle conversion, which is practically what you mentioned. Um, the big reason why we didn't choose to make a that type of style is because one, we already had um, a motorcycle that was available, and two, we would like to produce something that is street legal that we can give to the market and get our foot in the door in terms of our experience for stepping into the you know EV automotive world. Um, yes, it would probably cost less and would be lighter. However, in terms of you know what people are used to in terms of the weight and power that is given by a conventional motorcycle. Our original idea was to match that as best as possible. And, but like I said, due to uh, Corona, our funds were cut short. So we weren't able to buy the batteries cells needed to fabricate the battery pack that we were really working for. We actually had a uh, 100 to 200 amp hour one in mind that we had a pretty good design for, but unfortunately due to the situation at hand, we're not able to produce that. Um, yeah, yeah, um, and then I guess lastly, the video, Victor. Uh, there's another question the motorbike I described used to be common in European cars. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, another thing that we have is that the motorcycle, once you come to a full stop, the motor doesn't draw any charge. So, for example, you can lift the motorcycle for like a whole month on and it wouldn't like draw especially if you leave like all the accessories off even though the motor is on the motorcycle would not consume any power into you like does the throttle so and because it's really lightweight we not we're not like wasting a lot of like power from the battery so we actually touching based on the previous question i think one of the things that make us stand uh, on the side from like these other companies is that our motorcycle is super lightweight, it's lighter than their models, and, and it's more affordable. So if we come to like Harley Davidson, for example, their miles are like 100 miles per charge, and we can obtain that for, they, but they selling their motorcycle for like $25,000. With $2,000 more, if we boost it to like $8,000, we can actually get the same amount of mileage that they're getting and into a, a sort of different style motorcycle and it's not the same style that everybody everybody else is doing because like for the electric motorcycles it seems like everybody's picking one specific style but for us we're going for that retro modern style look and that's what we're trying to accomplish with this motorcycle um, any other question um i guess for the sake of time since we've taken up a lot of time i guess play the last video and then we conclude okay well, it's finally time. We're about to uh, let her rip. Full single. No, we think five. There you go. Hello, you guys. Welcome to my channel. On today's video, we're going to be building a test bench for the accessory components of the motorcycle. One was to gather all the components, such as the M unit. You see here the headlights, uh, the headlights that has everything integrated on turn signals and low beam and high beam, and switches 
and cables I was going to use, right? Um, for switches, I'm using a toggle switch and I'm using a momentum switch. So I gathered everything. Step two, I started taking measurements and so I could have an idea of how much space I was going to take with the build of the test bench. And then I realized that I had so many switches and I didn't want them just to be laying on the table. So I decided to make a housing. For the housing, I took some steps. The first step that I took in order to do this was to gather all the measurements for all the switches and all the components that I was going to put on the housing, add it up, and then think about like how much space I was going to put between the switches. So I add that to the total, and then I just built a regular rectangular box on solar. Here's the video of the A8 printing this part. Then for step two of the build, I went and uh, soldered all the switches. And the good thing about the switches is that they all use ground um, to send signal to the M unit. So I put common ground through all the switches and make some lead that goes to the M unit. Step three, I went and started wiring the M unit to the switches and then from the M unit to the headlights. Anyway, so it was pretty straightforward procedure. It was just to follow what the structure says and um, some factors that had to take in account once I the electric system. I'm gonna cut to the clip of this setup. All right, guys, so this is the test bench. At the beginning, we had the 3D part housing all the switches. We got a 12 volt battery, the M unit, and we have the headlights. Let's run through the quick procedure on how to turn it on. The housing here, housing, the first switch is to turn on the electric motor. Since we don't have the electric motor here, this is not hooked up to anything, so it's just like a dummy. Then we have the starter, um, the starter key right here, and then we have an auxiliary. This auxiliary, we're going to use it as the brake system. Right and left turn signal, horn and high and low beat. Great. Anyway, so these are the switches. So we turn on the switch. Ignition switch is on. M unit has power. We're gonna give it a quick uh, passing light so it can turn on uh, the headlight. So now the headlight is on. If we press the right turn signal, the right turn signal is gonna be displaying. We press the left turn signal, the left turn signal display. This M unit also has a feature that if we press both at the same time, it's going to turn on the hazard. Turn that off. And then we're going to have a horn. Um, has, we know that we don't have a horn, but it's actually displaying it on the M unit. And we're following off by the high beam and low beam. This M unit has a feature that has a passive um, quarter C flash. So if you're driving on the road and the person ahead of you is driving under the speed limit, you can just like tap the button and it's just gonna flash the person so you can get out of your way and you can continue um, on the road at the speed limit, right? Then um, here we got the braking because there were some uh, logistical issues because of the coronavirus. We don't have the satellite to display it, but it works to turn on, uh, it will be the the same procedure, turn off the M unit and it turns the whole thing off. In the past, we also made another test bench, which was the test bench that we use for the electric motor. Here is a 10 kilowatts uh, nominal, 20 kilowatt max to the DC uh, portion channel and uh, process it. Kenny, where is our total? I don't think we really can disclose it because I think it was a deal. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah that's great. Uh, it's from Golden Motors. I'll tell you guys that. Yeah. Did you guys see it here? The Golden Motor. That's a controller. Um, we literally, the only whole effect um, track that we found is zero to five volts. Typically, we have a potentiometer. Um, this is the club man handlebar. Yeah, let's do it. This is the Anderson 50 amp connector. Great. Looking at 40 volts. 
past the 20 app hours to get us enough to do testing and get around and see the design of the rest of the bike until we get a big, big, big battery pack. So our goal for today is to um, get a couple connections together and see if we can uh, power the motor and controller and you know use the hall sensor to you know get a little throttle action on the other one. Ivan is gonna <laughs> the camera. All right. Let me hold it. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Okay. See what I mean? Oh, it's spinning. Taking temperature in the wire, Terry. In the battery. That would be great if you guys, uh, when we were working at UDC and we were building housing and electric motor, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the clip. Today is Monday, Martin Luther King's Day in Washington, D.C. We're here working on our senior project with the boys in the machine shop. It's, uh, here's our bike that we're working on. So far, things are looking good. We're working on our new engine mount or motor mount since we're using electric. Uh, Victor is currently welding on spots that we're going to use to mount this new motor frame onto the actual bike's frame here. Got a little more, a little bit more to go, but a long way to this project is way over. And also, while we're here, we're sanding this down, getting this all this paint off, and all the rest. Working at these weird kinks and these weird, weird turns right now, and uh, it's gonna take some time. Things are looking clean. We've got a lot to work on. This hole, um, these anchors, and then drill the holes, we can remove it. So yeah, that's just a placeholder for now. All right. Getting into the shape now of a motorcycle, and then we're thinking on actually going for this color and just apply clear coat. Right. So the whole thing is over at the V number, so you guys want to steal the frame for, for us? <laughs> that's looking good. We're reminding us of like the Mercedes Silver or the Aston Martin Silver. Okay. You know, that's like $15,000 for that paint job. Yeah. 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 I really appreciate it. And don't forget to give us thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Bye. We're uh, how many weeks to see are we? Is what's it? Week week four? Week three? I think we're we're looking pretty good. We're gonna finish this semester strong. How you feeling, man? Are you okay, Victor? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, can't believe that I I went almost ten miles an hour in a freaking hallway. In a hallway, dog. Oh, Okay, thank you all. Thank you. All right, so. Okay. Thank you. Um, any more questions? We take one more question and we move on to the next group.